three buses, three boats, two countries, two random islands, a taxi, a minivan, and 20 hours of driving over three days. It makes you wonder, are taking buses in South America really worth the savings? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Does he like this? I'm not too sure. Let's get going. <laughs> Around, it's like a tornado. It's obviously a little bit earthy. <laughs> so here's the situation. We've just finished up our trip in Cusco, Peru, here, and we're about to start an epic 15-day South America tour that kicks off here in La Paz, Bolivia. Which I thought would be pretty common, but apparently not. There's no direct flights available currently, and the ones that are take about eight hours, massive stopover, and with a bag, which is where they get you, could cost thousands of dollars, and we need to rethink our options. So we have. We've opted to go on a wild adventure, crossing land borders, booking overnight buses with Peru Hop, and spending money on experiences instead. Which sounds ideal to me. I'm real grumpy. People ask us, what happens when things don't go to plan? Uh, yeah, that wasn't great. Yeah, I'm still undecided if this is a good idea. Excited? Not really. <laughs> Can I be honest? Yeah. Like, anxious. Anxious? Yeah. About? Like, I've never been on one of these buses before. And, like, what if I need to go to the bar? You can do ones. I know, but then that's like moving all around, you're like bumping to everyone in the aisle. I'm excited. For me, this is, this is fun. This is going to be camping, uh, overnight adventure situation. Some of it's going to be shit. Some of it's going to be fun. How long is this one spent? Seven or eight hours. Oh, wow. I'm so excited. <laughs> Do you want to go first? You, you pick the seats. You're always better at that. Go on. It's big. There's loads of space. Come on down. Heaps of leg room. Oops, sorry. Okay, good evening guys, buenas noches chicos. Okay guys, welcome on board, okay? Well guys, first of all, okay, I will be your guide here on board, okay, for all of you. My name is Mar. Uh, tomorrow guys, we arrive the same, 5 a.m. in the morning, okay? And as you know, we are offering to you a breakfast, continental breakfast for 15 soles. Okay guys, guess you have the tour. After the tour, you're going to come back from here. And as soon as you come back here, we depart to Copacabana. So far it's been okay. You kind of get what you pay for. It's only $59 for three buses, three different like cities spread yeah, out over stops, 18 hours. We had some bad luck on the bus. <laughs> First the window started leaking. <laughs> then my chair wouldn't go back. <laughs> then the only other chairs that were left were right by the bathroom. So and they, they stunk. They were a bit stinky. I mean it worked out in the end because we both got to kind of like lay flat on our own seats. But, yeah. Um, we, we, we were so. not off to a good start. But then we did get some sleep. You get, yeah. you get a blanket. It was actually reasonably comfortable. The seats do recline a lot, so you can get like a yeah. lot of angle. Jeez, that's bright. <laughs> so I should say, we're in Puno. This is the first stop. We've actually got three hours in between the buses. It was rude for me to cover my eyes with a camera like that. <laughs> We've actually got three hours in between the buses, and we had planned to just chill on the bus, maybe get the breakfast, which is what we ended up having. And then they came around and they're like, Did you want to go and see uh, Lake Titicaca? Yeah, Lake Titicaca. We're going up to some of the Reed Islands. We weren't sure about baggage and what to do and everything. We just packed our valuables, taken it with us, and left some of that crap we don't care about <laughs> on the bus, including all of our main luggage. So mm. hopefully that's all then when we get when we get back. But we're actually already we've booked a Lake Titicaca tour. Because this lake is kind of unique, it splits both Bolivia and Peru. We've booked it from Copacabana, which is where we're actually stopping and sleeping tonight. But yeah, they came around and was like, it's 15 US dollars if you want to go into a tour. The bus waits for you, so it's kind of all just organized. It was just kind of easy, wasn't it? We thought, let's give it a go. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I thought there'd be go more of it. Go, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> go, go to the roof if you want, only four oh, B. Oh, there's seats there. <laughs> Come down here. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, so there are 120 floating islands. I had no idea there were that many. And on each island, there are about five to six families living on each. So when we land, we are able to potentially go on a, um, a boat. And I've seen photos before, and they've got these like really cool dragon like structures on the front of them. The cool knowledge bombs. Well, another cool. Wait, I took some notes. Hang on. What a nerd. 
Okay, so most of the Uros people used to live on the mainland, but the first people to move out to the islands wanted kind of like a nomadic lifestyle. And the cool thing about it for them is because they're indigenous people, they didn't have to pay tax, they don't have to pay for water or electricity because they've got these um, indigenous, indigenous laws. Kamisarati! <laughs> <laughs> These structures are beyond impressive. I mean, I had a vision of what this might look like before we got here, and it's flatter than I expected. It's way better set up than I thought. Their engineering, their construction skills are so impressive. I'm in awe. Hello. That's really strange. It's like not solid ground, obviously, because it's reeds. It feels like you're walking on like a cloud or like a bouncy castle. <laughs> <laughs> bouncy castle, yeah. Okay, okay yeah. that's this. Fun facts. Lake Titicaca sits 3,800 metres above sea level. It's the largest freshwater lake in South America at about 8,000 square metres and it's 300 metres deep in places, which sounds really sketchy. Roughly 56% of the lake is in Peru, the other 44% is in Bolivia, and history is a bit murky, but it's believed that the Uros people lived on the lake before the Incas, and that's part of the reason why they built on the water in the first place, for safety and access to better fishing. The islands themselves are actually just crazy. They're about three metres deep, but the bottom is constantly rotting away in the water, so they have to replace new reeds on top every few weeks. Now guys, as you know, we are departing from here, from Puno to Kasani. Kasani, guys, is the border between Bolivia and Peru. Okay, guys, as soon as we arrive, please, guys, we need to take all our belongings from here and from the storage, okay? Why? Because we're going to cross the border walking. Suitcase idiots. This is the first time it's not we for like over a week and it's been fine. It has. It's not sounding good on the old wheel. <laughs> Look at this tree! <laughs> oh, idiots. That was the quickest border crossing ever though. The stamping out of Peru took 30 seconds. Then we had to walk for, let's say 200 meters. Yeah, probably about that. And then... <laughs> We're at 3,800, almost 3,900. But we just had to wait a little bit longer coming in because for New Zealanders and Australians, it's very fast. I'm sure a lot of other uh, passports as well. But a few people had to pay for visas, and that process takes a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome to Bolivia. It's, uh, it's a great place to be a flash packer. <laughs> don't break, we've got three more weeks of this shit. <laughs> this is what it's come to. Poor danger. Oh, how am I the one puffing and he's got two suitcases? Yeah? Okay. You made it, babe? Really? Not to be negative. I'm real grumpy. People ask us, what happens when things don't go to plan? Uh, yeah, that wasn't great. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Uh, oh, it's a beautiful you. room though. Wow. Thank you, thank you. Look at that. <laughs> you yeah, sleep cool. upstairs? I'm upstairs in the bedroom. Ah, yeah. the bedroom. Yes. I, kitchen. Your kitchen, you have a coffee taste. Oh. Okay, I'm a little, I'm a little less If we're being honest, Copacabana wasn't really much to write home about. There's a couple of okay spots near the lake to have a beer and kind of chill out for a bit. But it's really not taking advantage of the amazing setting, which is a little bit of a shame. Maybe in years to come, that'll change. So we decided we'd spend some of the savings from taking the bus on doing the number one thing to do instead. Nice spot. Yeah, these are apparently way faster than the normal ones, aren't they? And that's a day trip out to Isla del Sol, which translates to Island of the Sun. It's the most picturesque part of Lake Titicaca, and according to legend, it's apparently the birthplace of the sun itself, and where the world actually began. If you are going to do the hike, we are going to start from here, okay? You can leave your belongings here, like jackets, you are not going to need it, okay? But the trip over was not as fast as advertised. Maybe that's why it was so slow, there's no engines, there's no motors at all. 
water. Oh my god, I'd love to swim. I wonder if we can. Maybe. You'll want to after we climb up there. Shit, boy. <laughs> Let's go. Then we are going to hike until the aerial. You see the aerial, right? Then the antenna. We are going to hike until there. And after that, over there we are going to rest some minutes. you get to a little bit going up here but this was just a 10 US dollar inclusion we booked our ticket there's not really all that much included to be honest other than the slow ass boat how's your heart rate it's really high beating out your chest you really feel it eh that's true I can feel my like <laughs> these terraces were set up by the Incas just learned there's uh, 3,500 people living here which is surprising it is the largest island on the lake, which makes sense considering <laughs> where we were on the floating lake. I mean, the floating islands. We're on our way up now. We'll be trying some local tea up here. It's it's a plant that grows in the island. Right. Uh, actually, in the islands in most of Titicaca Lake. Yeah. And it's good for uh, uh, headaches, stomach aches. Oh, so is it kind of like a coca tea or not? Not yeah. really. Coca tea has alcoholites, so it's right. like okay. like a little bit drug, but. Uh, this muñati is just to relax the okay. stomach, relax the headache. I like it. And the locals yeah, drink it? Yeah, they drink this. If it's good for them, it's good for me. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, you can you can drink. <laughs> so I'm just gonna just gonna try it raw. Uh, so, so there's also um, lemon that we can squeeze into it and some sugar. But does it need it? It actually gives off like a bit of a lem sip vibe to me. I feel like it's the kind of thing you drink when you are sick. When you're sick. And actually, come to think of it, it's, that's it almost what like he that. said. Yeah. Well, it's obviously a little bit earthy, but um. <laughs> Unique taste. Mm -hmm. okay. oh, I mean, I Should like we add it. some? Um, yeah, let's mix it up. Okay. Way nicer since we added the lemon and the sugar. It's really refreshing considering it's hot and it's hot outside. Yeah. It is like super refreshing. Yep. I think that's the sign of a good tea, I heard. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> There's an interesting look to catch a mudbrook house while it's still in the process of being built. I'm not sure. I wonder what that is. If that is actually concrete on the top and then that's what the, the roof and the ceiling actually sits on. It's impressive how that can survive. Okay, I've got a question for you. All right, stay said, start recording. <laughs> now that we've been to the island, would you have rather stayed here or in Copacabana? Ooh, there's no phone service here, which I think is a nice thing. So actually stopping and taking a break and reading a book would have been nice and yeah, it's like beautiful. If we didn't have to sort out all our logistics, like getting a SIM card and stuff like that. Yes, true. And then luggage, that would have been <laughs> tricky enough as it was. I mean, yeah. it's probably easier on a boat. And then they actually, they, we saw someone go past, they had a mule bring out their bag. So. I think a mule can take two hard case suitcases. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if there's a, a watering hole, if there's somewhere that you can actually get down and swim and jump off a little, um, yeah. jump off the wharf or it's something. It's real chill here. That's super chill. It's quite nice. It's just locals really. Yeah. It weirdly feels like Greece here in a way. There's just some, some like very similar parallels whether it's like the cobblestone streets maybe, yeah, I, the, maybe it's the donkeys as well i don't know it's kind of similar no i get what you're saying i mean and i'm sure on some islands not on the santorini or the mykonos because those are so developed yeah true but this is like maybe uh, an up and coming <laughs> an up and coming <laughs> island it take a few years <laughs> yeah because you can see but you, they're, they're all getting all the buildings are being set up in a way that uh, you know the main viewpoint the main feature is is looking out towards the lake and there's little beer spots There's lots of local people around. I'm with you. Look, yeah. look at that Hotels Cabanas set up overlooking that. I really like it. Here. Yeah, and boats taking people back and forth Yeah. Tell you what It's a lot more relaxing Greece and it's going to be different again tonight Because we're going on another bus to La Paz. It's about five hours. I think the strange thing is here this morning We looked at we looked at the weather. It was Six degrees here and 23 already in La Paz. It's outrageous. It's <laughs> like five hours away, and it's that much difference in terms of the weather. So we're going now, we're going to feel like we're going to a beach holiday. One last beer before we go. That's a nice scene there, eh? Yeah, great spot for a little beer scene. A big beer scene before we get on the bus. Maybe that wasn't a very yeah, we're just thinking, pff, now we're bloated and full. So we go to the bathroom and then it's over six hours to the pairs, guys. Yeah. 
we're just about to put the cameras away we forgot one thing one crucial thing yeah. is that we can't actually get to La Paz without a crossing on a ferry so our bus is going to take about 40 minutes to get across we're only going to take about like 15 minutes so you need to explain that properly what we're the getting bus how's the bus getting across the bus is getting across on a ferry on a barge <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, well, we must be going on a passenger ferry separately. I don't know, I don't really know the details. <laughs> that was exciting. <laughs> I'm getting notifications that our bags are no longer with us, but our air tags. So hopefully that means they haven't sunk to the bottom of the lake, but um, I can't see the boat right now. See it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bus. The bus. Can't see it. Oh, the bus is going to take 40 minutes. Okay. <laughs> the dust is crazy. It's so Dings windy. The ice. Just whips up out of nowhere. I think this is us over here. Oh, oh, oh. It's okay. It's alright. Right. He does he like us? I'm not too sure. Let's get going. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is us here anyway. I don't know where the f we are. Can't swear on YouTube. But uh, this is, is what you get. Watch your step. Yeah. Tonight, yeah, it? camera can't even focus. It's so glad to duck. This is getting even weirder this day, this night, this multi day. Because it's getting way better. We've got popcorn. And they've just put on the Lion King. Thanks for hanging out with us on this adventure. Next time we're exploring La Paz, but a little hesitantly. It actually was a little bit overwhelming coming in last night. It was uh, dark and a lot of homelessness, a lot of rubbish, and yeah. a lot of kind of sketchy looking areas. So we're trying to come in with open mind. We yeah, we need to give it a chance, right?